Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for having me tonight. A year and a half ago, I was sitting in the corner of a co-working space in Boston. My heart was racing, my palms were sweaty, felt a little like I do now. <laughs> I was completely terrified. The reason for that fear was I had just been offered my dream job. But more on that later. My name's Rob Burnett. I'm an entrepreneur, cyclist, traveler, lawyer, kind of, <laughs> and Eagle Brook alum. I just turned 30, which to some of you might seem ancient, and to some of you might seem really young to be coming up here and talking about life experiences. But that's exactly what I'd like to do today. In my short life, I've had the privilege of making some pretty extraordinary decisions. And those decisions have led me to some amazing places, to meet some amazing people, to some great jobs, and just all around life-changing opportunities. Now, there have been a million speeches about following your dreams or doing what you love. And you should absolutely all do those things. But I want to talk today a little bit about how it feels to do those things and to make the decision to do those things. The cliche is often, do it when it feels right. But I found in my life that some of the biggest decisions, some of the hardest decisions, some of the boldest decisions don't feel right at all. In fact, sometimes they feel very wrong, and they're certainly very scary. And so I'd like to take you on a little journey today through my life in the hopes that as you all go out into the world beyond Eagle Brook and have to start making decisions for yourselves, you have some tools to decide how you're going to make those decisions. And the fun part is, this story starts right here at Eagle Brook. So when I was 12 years old, my family moved from New Jersey to Denver, Colorado. I left behind all the friends I'd ever known, and I struggled. I had a really rough seventh grade year. It's fourth form, right? Okay. Uh, and that bled into the start of an eighth grade year where I was really having a hard time. But then something crazy happened. As I remember it, my dad was on a business trip in New York City when he ran into his cousin at an airport. They caught up on life, and my struggles came up. Now, my dad's cousin, amongst other things, was an Eagle Brook alum. And he said, why don't you give, at the time, Stuart Chase a call? You know, it might be too late this year, but maybe next year Rob can go. It's a great place. So my dad did. He called up Eagle Brook. Now, Eagle Brook was still two weeks away from starting classes. Turns out, a student had just dropped out. There was an empty bed, and just my luck, someone took pity on me and thought I was an interesting case. And so they made me an offer. If you come to Eagle Brook, and you like it, and we like you, you can come. And so at 12 years old, I hopped on an airplane, flew out here, and took a tour of the hill. Thankfully, somehow, someone liked me, and I was offered a spot. So at 13, sorry, not 12, I had to make the first big life decision. And my parents weren't going to make it for me. Now, some of you might be sitting there thinking, that's an easy decision. There's a, there's a ski hill here. It's a great school. You're already miserable in Denver. This should be easy. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if there's some others of you here saying, that's an easy choice. You have a choice? Why would you ever come here? That's crazy. <laughs> sorry, Andy. Uh, but so you can see why it might have been a tough choice. It's scary to step out of your comfort zone, to come to a new place, to do a new thing, even if all the stars align to say you should do it. Now, to be honest with you, I don't know what gave me the courage or the gumption other than anything was better than what I was in, but I made the choice, and I took the leap, and within two weeks of ever hearing about Eagle Brook and knowing it existed, I was moving into Halstead. And I'd like to take a moment here to thank the Chase family, and the entire Eagle Work community for taking a risk on me. Because I wouldn't be here and everything I'm about to talk about never would have happened if I hadn't taken that initial leap to come here. But I had such a good time here that I moved right down the valley for high school and did three years at Deerfield Academy. But then it came time to decide what was next. And I'm sure you'll all find that when you become seniors in high school, that the conversation will be dominated by where you want to go to college. What's next? And while the conversation was fun, and I got into college, and I did the whole tour, 
my heart wasn't in it. I wasn't as passionate as my classmates about where I was going to go or what I was going to major in. No offense to all the teachers here, but I was a little burned out after five years of working very hard and learning a ton. And I wasn't quite ready to spend four more years in the four walls of the classroom. But I didn't have any outlet for that. Everyone I knew was going to college. All my teachers and family friends, that's just what you did. But because I knew that I was feeling a little bit different, I kept my eyes open for opportunities. And to be honest with you here, I couldn't tell you how these two opportunities landed in my lap. But over the course of my senior year, I was offered the opportunity to spend three months in Asia, traveling the Himalayas in India, Tibet, and Nepal. And I was also offered the opportunity to live in New Zealand and work in a bike shop. And as an avid cyclist, that sounded great. So all of a sudden, I had this opportunity to take a year off, defer college, and take this amazing adventure. And choice number two. Again, it might seem easy. Those sound like amazing trips. But when everyone around you is headed in one direction, you have to trust yourself a lot to step off into another direction. Now, thankfully, it had worked out when I came to Eagle Brook, and I had a little bit of courage stored up. And so I decided, and thankfully had the support of the people around me, to defer college for a year. Some people were afraid I might never go, but I took the risk. And the results were incredible. I got to spend an entire year growing and learning, living with people of different cultures, experiencing new things, and becoming independent. So when I did go back to college the next year, I came back refreshed, strong, and I was really able to take full advantage of the educational opportunities in front of me. In keeping with our theme, when I came to the end of my college career, it was time for another choice. This one, a much broader one. What do you want to do with your life? Real easy decision, right? Thankfully, at 21, you don't have to have all the answers. But I, had to do that, I did have a choice to make, and I didn't quite know what I wanted to do. And so I looked everywhere. I chatted with people on LinkedIn. I took every meeting I could. I looked at grad schools. And I pestered my, uh, my career uh, counselor. But nothing ever felt quite right. But I kept looking. And one coffee meeting during my winter break, my senior year, changed everything. I met a family friend. She had had a very successful corporate career, and she wanted to start something of her own. And so she had an idea. She wanted to start a tea company. All that tea would come from Nepal. Now, you remember that year off I took. I had spent six weeks in Nepal, falling in love with the place, making friends there, and knowing I wanted to do something there. I loved it so much that during my junior year of college, I made the easy decision to go back and study abroad there. And I lived there for four months studying entrepreneurship and development. So when Maggie came to me asking if I wanted to help her start this tea company, I was intrigued. I went back to school to finish my last semester, and I kept looking at other jobs. But I kept being pulled back to the idea of this tea company. It was a risk. I didn't even like tea. And I certainly didn't know anything about business. But I saw in front of me an opportunity to build something from the ground up, to work in a place that I was intrigued by and loved, and get an opportunity to try something completely new. The risk was it certainly wasn't a steady career. I didn't know if or when I'd get paid. And who knows, we could have been out of business in six months. But in keeping with my own little tradition, I decided to take the leap. I packed up my van at the end of college, drove out to Colorado, and help Mar Maggie start a tea company. And the result was I got to spend three years growing that company. Based in Denver, I got to travel back and forth to Nepal to pick teas. I got to go to Whole Foods where we were selling our product and give samples to people. And I got to learn the ins and outs of starting a business. And that really sparked my passion for entrepreneurship and really directed my career from there. But after three years of working at the tea company, I thought I had outgrown it and it was time for a new challenge. And so using that on my resume, amongst other things, I was able to go to the University of Michigan for law school, one of the top 10 schools in the country. And there I studied to be a lawyer. Now to understand my next decision, you have to understand a little bit about law school. It's a tough place. It's very focused. 
And unlike any, uh, any other school, at least I had been to, it was much more singularly focused on one career, being a lawyer. Makes sense. The, law, the practice of law is a serious profession. And when you want to participate in it, it's very important that you learn from attorneys that are more senior to you. So as a young attorney, it's very important to start your career at a law firm, to have mentors, to practice law. And anyone who graduates law school but decides not to practice law is taking a real risk that they might ne never be able to enter the profession again. But during my last year of law school, I felt the itch to go back and join a startup, to go back and be an entrepreneur. And so to the consternation of certainly my career counselors, as well as some of my professors and my friends thought I was crazy, but I decided to forego a career in law and instead search for a startup that sparked my passion, that I wanted to work for, that I wanted to dive into. And that was a long search, including my time in law school. It took almost two years. I met with everyone I could. I talked to mentors. I applied to a million jobs but a combination of nothing ever came my way or nothing ever felt quite right. Finally, I was working in Detroit, helping accelerate startups, and had an offer on the table for a full-time position at Michigan, helping attract startups to the state. It was a good job. It was where I wanted to be. It would have paid nicely. And I had an offer on the table. As I was waiting for them to finish the paperwork, I kept my options open and ended up on a call with a guy named Jason, who had a little company in Boston called Net Capital at 5.30 on a Friday afternoon. After half an hour of talking to Jason, I knew I'd found the company for me. We had the same passions and the same dream for the future. But there was a problem. His was a small company. They couldn't just take a risk on anybody. And they were never going to hire someone they hadn't met in person. And I had an offer on the table that I was going to have to take. So on Monday morning, I shot Jason an email. And I said, I'm coming to Boston. I'm going to come to your offices, and we're going to meet and see if this will work. And he said, OK. So two days later, I bought a plane ticket, and I was on my way to Boston. And by lunch the next day, I had a job offer on the table from this company. And this brings us back to the beginning of my talk when I was terrified in the corner of a co-working space. And I had to make one of the highest stakes decisions of my life, certainly from a career standpoint. I was going to, I had not only had I already given up a law career, or at least certainly put it on hold, but now I was about to give away up another steady, good, reputable job that would have had benefits and a nice paycheck to join a little startup in a new city I'd never lived in with seven people that could be gone in six months. I was absolutely petrified. I called family, I called friends, and they all told me to trust myself. And still shaking with adrenaline, I left the corner, went back in the offices and shook Jason's hand and said, I'll take the job. And as a result, for the last year and a half, I've been absolutely loving it, helping build a really innovative financial technology company. And so that's a little bit of my story. I thought a lot about how I wanted to wrap it up for you all to try and impart some wisdom, if I have any to impart at all. So I'd like to leave you with three things. The first, and the thing I haven't spoken about today, is the fact that when you want to make bold decisions, I couldn't have made any of those decisions without a strong support network. First and foremost, my family, but also my community, my friends. I had people around me, so if I failed, I knew I had people to rely on. I knew I wasn't going to be ruined. And so as you go out in life, whether it's the Eagle Brook community, your family, wherever you go to secondary school, college, et cetera, keep your friends close. Build a community around yourself. The stronger bonds you create, the easier it will be for you to take risks in your life. The second thing I'd like to leave you with is the idea that you never know where opportunity is going to come. It might be, you might run into it in a random airport in New York, or a coffee shop, or on a random phone call on a Friday afternoon. Even if you, don't want, if you love what you do and you have no intention of leaving, keep an eye out, because you never know what's around the next corner. And even if you have an offer on the table, take that next phone call. 
even better things might be right there. And the third and final thing I'd like to leave you with is the idea that maybe you shouldn't wait till it feels right. Because if you wait till it feels right, you might be waiting a very long time. And so I urge you to trust yourselves, to embrace fear when big change is on the horizon, and dive in with both feet. Thank you all very much. <laughs>